I know? agree. I agree with that. It's uh, you know, I thought a lot of that stuff got so blown up, and then it made fans just get on top. They became so hyper aware of everybody, and so if you had a joke that was similar to uh, someone else's joke, they'd be like, "Oh, you stole it." You're like nobody's still on these jokes. I mean, a we're going to come up with stuff that's going to be the same. The grand scheme of things, I mean, there's so few people that are stealing stuff. I understand some of the ones that did, but like you said, they do hit a wall that where they don't get past it because it, it can get you a little success ahead. But I mean, it's like it's just not a you know the people that did it. You're like, all right, so Carlos Mencia. Ones that were successful, you're like, I don't even know. <laughs> like, you can't even really name that many people. No, uh, no. The ones that steal, the universe pays them back. You yeah. know? Yeah. And I, you know, I remember a comic once said to me a long time ago, like, if, because I asked him about that, and he was just a, like a road cop. And I was like, you worry about people stealing your jokes. And he's like, if I can't write more jokes, then I have a pro bigger problem. And it's, it's not that you don't, you're rooting for stealing or you're, you know, that stealing is bad. It's just, you can't, if you just focus and trying to protect your jokes being stolen, I, you, you're, not, you're going to get nowhere because you're just, you're too, you're too precious over these jokes that you should be evolving and coming up with new stuff. Absolutely. And I'll tell you something. When, when I was getting started, I was really good friends with this guy, Ali Joe Prater. He was, a, he oh, was man. like a I Southern comedian. Well, I, I want to hear, dude. Why, why did you know? Him? Tell your thing, and then. Oh, he he was great. He was great, and he was my buddy, you know. But he would steal people's jokes, and they were always hating him. And he always said to me, "Mike, the only ones that really are mad about it is the ones that I tell it better than they do." Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. and, it, and it was true. You know, yeah. got people people that 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 really didn't care we're, we're like oh, i let him take my fucking joke he doesn't do it as good as i do he's not doing as good as me but the people yeah. that that he improved upon it and he did sometimes you know yeah but, it, well, but he, and he, did you know him so, no no i oh. just heard stories I, I read that story about fox where they opened for him or they didn't they have to like take him on stage they put him on stage before the show starts and have like a curtain over him or something or like yeah that was towards the end of his life yeah yeah that's, I mean, sad towards is like one of the best stories I've ever heard in my life, though. Is well, I will tell you, I will tell you, I I hired him to do a show open for me years. This was years ago. And and when I found him, he was passed out on the baggage conveyor belt, just going around as if he was a big piece of baggage. <laughs> and I went, oh, well, my I mean, God. I know it's it's what. It's not to, you know, it's a sad thing, but it's also what I love about comedy and comedians is, uh, is, is just kind of, it's a mess. It's like someone that can be so talented in something and then just have like this not control and this other thing. And it's just, it, it, there's a, there's a, uh, like a sick beauty to it. Yeah. Really, that, that, that's a great way to pay it with him, man. He was amazing. He was amazing, mm -hmm. but he just was so messed up. His real name yeah. was Gilbert Hartsog, and he wow. he just kind of he was from Jackson, Michigan, and he yeah. and he speak spoke like I'm speaking, and he created that Ali Joe Prater, and yeah. and uh, one time Charlie Hill, you know who Charlie Hill is? He was an Indian comedian. Yeah, he yelled out from the back of the comedy store. He goes, he said, "Hey, Ali Joe, where are you from originally?" And just he goes back. He goes, "I'm from a place called Gilbert's Bluff." He goes, <laughs> Charlie goes, where's that? Where's that? Where's that? He goes, that's right near Hartzog's Landing. Let me do my show. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. He, was, he was the best. That's crazy. So he was in LA and then was he just do the road a lot? Yeah, he did. The, he ended up being a, a serious road comic and he made a lot of little albums and cassette tapes. They sold at truckers, truckers stops. Yeah. And everybody said that he stole a lot of stuff and the truth is he just used a lot of old jokes, you know? That's the other, that's, I agree with you. So that's the other, my other thing with it. If you look at a lot of stolen jokes and you look at the joke, you're like, oh, my uncle also says that joke. Yeah. It's, sometimes they're fighting over a joke that's like, I'll be honest with you, you should all be embarrassed about this joke. 
work and it's you sh no one should be doing it and that was something that i realized if i ever had i've had a few jokes where it's like well someone did that or someone sounded like that joke and i could tell those jokes were just very like evergreen jokes and they were never uh personalized so when you have those are the ones that you know where you're like yeah it's like you can they're kind of out there for people to grab and someone's going to grab it because we're all talking about mcdonald's and the drive through like you know like there was that old thing where they said leno uh would do a mcdonald's joke and then they'd be like but uh if you're you know and everybody did mcdonald's jokes but they're like but if you're leno's mcdonald's joke and it was like you, you i remember just reading that in a book like and you gotta you know it's like you gotta remember that like it's gotta be your mcdonald's joke so you can do airplane stuff but it's gotta be your airplane stuff if you're talking about the seat and all that stuff it's all been done. But if you go, here's my experience right. in That's an airplane, right. then- I'll yeah. tell you a funny story. I, I I had this one bit that I did in, on my 1984 HBO special. You probably weren't even born then, were you? I was, I was 79. Oh, oh, oh we, okay. You, I can go tell you, Mike, I was not allowed to watch that HBO special. Okay, <laughs> no, you weren't allowed to. But, but I, I did this joke and then I stopped doing stand up, And after a while, People would come up and tell me the joke, or so people. I would years later, I would hear the joke as a joke, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I started, and I, which was funny, I always laughed. I said, "Okay, that's funny. That I, that's my bit." But, but recently, you know, I started doing stand up again about a year ago, and I only kept one thing, one damn thing of of the hour and a half, two hours, whatever I had, and I would do this joke. I would end it with it. And then I put a clip up and that's the one clip. It's got like 2 million views, but wow. so many of the things are, that's an old joke. That's an yeah. old joke. And then till finally one person goes, you stole that from Mike Binder's HBO special. <laughs> and I finally go, dude, look who, look at the name on the reel. <laughs> it's like, people are just like, just shut up and let, yeah. just laugh at the joke. What do you yeah. care where a joke comes from? It's well, it's there too is, you know, sometimes you're, they, they go after some uh, older guys and you're like, yo, dude, he might've wrote that joke. <laughs> like, I don't, you know, it's like, they can think it's like, oh, that's an old joke. You're like, he's been doing comedy since the he's 70s. Old. He 